My name is Kate Wellspring. I'm the Collections Manager at the Amherst College Museum of Natural History. When you come to the museum, you'll see over 1,700 uh, specimens on exhibit. The things in the collections are the things that the museum possesses but aren't exhibited. These are the things that you won't see, and these are the things that people do research on and are used for teaching. We consider them a very important part of the museum. So the drawer that I'm going to show you is full of um, some unbeloved but nevertheless amusing specimens here in our collection. Um, these are part of the vertebrate paleontological collection and this is a drawer full of what amounts to fossilized feces. They're called coprolites and believe it or not they can yield some uh, interesting and important uh, information for paleontologists, uh, the kind of information that you can't really get any place else. Um, bones can't give you the kind of dietary information that you can get in coprolites when they're well preserved. So we hang on to these, believe it or not, and many museums do. It's not just a strange fetish that we have here. These drawers are another part of the collection that isn't normally on display. This is more collection storage. And these drawers contain very, very tiny objects that we store in glass vials, in plastic boxes, and in old cigarette cases. These cases probably came to the museum in the 1940s. Uh, they used to give them out for free in drugstores after the cigarettes were sold. So the person who was curating the museum at the time had a ready supply of cigarette boxes. So he just sort of recycled them and they're still used to store some specimens today. This is the mini museum of obsolete specimen storage containers. These are all containers that I found museum specimens in when we were packing them uh, and getting ready to move into our current building. These were plucked right out of the collections as they were. This is one of my favorite specimens in the whole museum. It's also in storage. We don't keep this on display. Um, it's rather delicate and we consider it rather precious. It's most interesting for its historical importance, uh, potentially more than its scientific importance. This is the foot of an, a kind of extinct bird called the moa. We have a complete moa skeleton on display upstairs in the museum. Moas were very large birds. You can tell this is, this is a large foot. Moas had no front limb. They were running birds, and they lived in Australia and New Zealand. They're recently extinct. This was put together in the 19th century, and it's particularly fascinating for the story that's associated with it. So when it was cataloged, a small card that we keep in our ca card catalog was made up for it, and it reads like this. The bones of this specimen were found in the bottom of a sailor's trunk. The man died in the South Seas, and the trunk was sent to relatives in Greenfield. Dr. Hitchcock took them to England, where he was studying with Sir Richard Owen. There he carved the wooden casts which complete the legs and foot. In this cabinet, which is down in the uh, lab of the Natural History Museum, are two specimens that are rather dramatic. They both met violent ends. That's true of a lot of the modern animals that we have in our collection. They, they didn't just keel over and die and end up in our museums. Unfortunately, they were often actively collected. The chimpanzee on the top shelf has a bullet wound in its skull, and the exit wound was somewhere on the back of the skull and it's now held together by masking tape. The other skull is a hippopotamus. The hippopotamus has uh, some soft tissue still clinging to it. That's what all of that sort of dark brown material is. When the skull was cleaned, uh, whoever cleaned it looks like they weren't really a details person because it's, it's still clinging there. There's also a large round hole on the side of the hippo's skull. Uh, that hole was made by a bullet. 
you can see it was quite a large caliber weapon. It, it takes a lot to kill a hippo. Our museum has a good size collection of osteological specimens. Um, that means the bones of modern animals. These two are some of our uh, rarer animals. Um, the one on the left is a gibbon. It's a kind of ape. They live uh, in very small populations in some parts of uh, Asia. And the chimpanzee on the right is a juvenile animal. It was less than three or four years old when it died. These two animals are a great example of um, specimens that we want to take care of particularly well because it would be illegal now to collect the bodies of either of these. Um, they're both live in very small populations right now in the wild and the killing of them is highly regulated as it should be. So when museums have animals like this in their teaching collection, it serves them well to take care of them as best they can. That's one of the reasons why we keep these in a sealed cabinet. The cabinet will keep out bugs and protect them from light and dust. Uh, hopefully we can make them last for many more generations of Amherst students to study.